These mountains are 8,800, yeah. 8,600. No helicopter can get up there. If you're really struggling, the idea that you can put someone on your shoulder, say, come on, mate, let's go down. You're struggling to survive yourself. So you're in your own little world up there. It, they're dangerous places, especially above 8,000 meters, the so-called death zone. Hi, I'm Mark, and today I'm meeting with Adrian Haynes. He's a Guinness World Record holder, and he's traveled the North and South Poles and climbed the highest mountains in the world. Let's go and meet up with him. So it's really nice to meet you, Adrian. Good to meet you too, Mark. So what exactly does an adventurer do? Most people, most professional guys who go into the adventure world, they specialize. They're mountaineers, they're polar skiers or polar explorers mm. or they're whatever. Most people specialize. What's your favorite? Do you rather do climbing, hiking? I love the polar ice caps. Mm -hmm. that's Different your world. Favorite. That's, that's probably my favorite, yeah, because you really are away from all the, you're away from completely from civilization. So you're pretty much on your own. Yeah, and that's not, I'm not an unsociable guy. I love a party and I'm a social guy, but it's just that, that stillness of these places is just yeah. pretty special. So you climbed Mount Everest, didn't you? What I was climbed that Mount like? Everest in 2006. It was a pretty powerful experience. One of the three defining periods of my life. And then you said you nearly died when you were climbing. How did that happen? The biggest problem climbing Everest, which is the biggest single problem, uh, probably the oxygen. You got it, really the high. lack of oxygen. So that was it. My oxygen mask failed on my summit night, completely broke. So um, so I summited it without oxygen and uh, and I, but I got it working the, the final hour, final two hours, mm -hmm. so I summited. But then it didn't work on the way down. And that's when I realized when you've been without oxygen then 12 hours, 15, 18 hours, you know, you really are struggling. Between you and me, when you go and it's... Tell anyone, okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not telling you. When, when you go and you need to go for the toilet and you need a poo or a pee, <laughs> all right, where does it go? Does it just freeze? Well, um, where are you talking about? Mountains or polar ice caps? Well, both really. So, well, let's, well they're different because the, so the North Pole went down to minus 60. So we have a pee, it freezes, break it off, and there's a spear for a polar bear if he comes and attacks you. <laughs> but, uh, just joking. Um, but no, you know, put, throw up a, kettle, a bottle of water and it freezes time, it comes down. So uh, it is a problem, but uh, you know, actually school ch ch children always ask me this question, how do you go for toilet at minus 50? And uh, I usually have a quick answer, which is it's very quickly. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, what do you do? It just, it freezes up, but we try and bury it where you can, you know, bury all the polar it. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it away from camp, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Was your biggest challenge Mount Everest or was it K2? Well, the difference between K2 and Everest, K, so here's K2, K2 is 200 meters lower. It's way steeper, rock full dangers, avalanche, ferocious weather. Um, 330 people climbed that one, about four and a half thousand that one. Seeing as you went out there for, how was it, two weeks, wasn't it? To go where? To, to climb Everest. Oh, Everest takes two months. Two months? Yeah. It's a long time. But didn't you have to take some type of equipment in your bag and some food? What kind of food do you have to take? On all the big mountains, uh, I take something like 80 kilograms of, of stuff. A lot of it's food, special food. You know, Sherpas come to, to base camp and they're cooking a load of food there. So you're taking a lot of kit, equipment, medical kit, food, supplies, anything to make the, the whole experience a little bit more easier. Mm -hmm. And what's the scariest thing you've done? I suppose K2, yeah. It's, uh, K2? Yeah, the first year we did K2, we were pushing up and sadly two of our, we, we, we came down because it was too bad. Two guys got killed on the first year. Every four people that reach the top of K2, one will die trying. Yeah. So it's got a pretty 25% mortality rate. Yeah, and what's the, your favorite thing about climbing? You're in a different world. So when you're climbing on a mountain, all you think about is that next move, that next hold, your feet, your breath, you know, you're focusing and your antenna's up for avalanches, weather, things like that. Total utter focus. So you've really just got to focus you're around really the focused. surroundings. You're really focused and that's fantastic. So when you come down, you just realise you know, what an experience it is. What's your best advice for children? My best advice for children uh, would be, firstly, 
to write down your goals. Write down your goals for the mm. next year. Every year, around, this, you know, around the end of the year, November, December, I write down what I want to do the next year, okay? And when I write them down, it's not what I want to achieve by the end of the year. I do it by quarter, first quarter. Because if you, if, you, if you write down, I want to run a 10 mile race by the end of the year and you don't do anything, you'll have a lot of goals on the 31st of December that you've got to, you know, come and do. So write the goals down for a year I encourage children to write down what they want to achieve in their life. There's, there's something about writing it down that makes it happen. And I concentrate, I focus, so I recommend children really look at what they're good at, what skills they got, and if they don't know, ask your mum and dad, ask your friends, and then see how you can be even better at those strengths. Thank you once again for telling me about what you do. It's been quite interesting. Nice Pleasure. And you. It's been really interesting meeting Adrian today. He's a cool guy and he does some awesome expeditions. See you next time.